Is look like someone really, you know, a painter or artist was doing this without any solid knowledge or experience. My name is Ala Shapira. I was one of the first medical responders after Chernobyl accident. I spent less 16 years working for the FDA to develop drugs against radiation exposure. Now I am going to review clips from Chernobyl HBO series. Okay, let's watch. In this clip, Boss tells one of his subordinates that if he is not going to follow his orders, then he will be fired. And if the two of you disagree, then you don't have to work here, and you won't. You won't work anywhere ever again. I'll see to it. This clip is very realistic. Approximately two months after the explosion, I spent a total of about 30 days examining patients who live in the most contaminated areas in Ukraine. We were told very strictly not to tell the population that anything is wrong. Our job was to tell them that everything is good. And if we say opposite, then we will lose our jobs and we would never get them back. In this clip, a worker from the nuclear power station starts bleeding shortly after the explosion. Oh. This scene is not realistic. Radiation will lead to bleeding if patient developed acute radiation syndrome with a bone marrow failure. But this would occur in the first weeks, never on the spot. In this clip, population of Pripyat is evacuated by buses. People were told that they are leaving only for three days, but they never came back. Not all the buses came on time. Children and adults were all outside their houses waiting for the buses. They were playing in the radioactive sand and the showers of radioactive particles were falling on the ground. I've heard this story from one of the mothers whose child I treated two years after evacuation from leukemia. In this clip, Uliana offers stable iodine to a secretary to protect her from thyroid cancer. Stable iodine will keep your thyroid from absorbing radioactive iodine. Take one a day for as long as they last. Potassium iodide will protect from thyroid cancer only if it's given in the right time. It's not clear how soon after the exposure Uliana offered the secretary to take iodine. The maximum amount of time potassium iodide would be effective is about 12 to 18 hours after the exposure. The Soviet government started handling potassium iodide to children 10 days after the explosion. And at that point, uh, it was a totally useless effort. People went to the pharmacy where potassium iodine was over the counter and not knowing the dose, they just fed their children with the pills. If the dose or regimen is exceeded the normal, it cause acute ulcers in the stomach. In Kyiv, I was called to the emergency room where parents brought children bleeding from their stomach due to incorrect dose of potassium iodide. In this clip, the man is told to put on homemade armor. We make these from lead scrap. Put it on under your balls. You ever go hunting? No. Well, 
Today's your lucky day. You, me, that ugly Armenian in the tent, Garo. We do animal control. Animal control? Yeah, they're radioactive. So they have to go. So lead is one of the most uh, used metals that protect from radiation. And using this local armor would help to protect local area. Animals were highly contaminated and nobody took care of them to wash them off. So there was a fear that they will spread the radiation around. In this clip, Uliana goes to the library and tries to obtain some technical information. Yes? I need to see the following documents. They're listed as permission only. Comrade. can have that one. This is how Soviet government thought less knowledge, more silence, and less panic. My boss asked me to collect information about radiation to make a presentation in front of uh, medical personnel at the largest hospital in Kiev just to give them the basic ideas about radiation and uh, what to expect, how to treat patients. Nobody had any training in radiation, neither at the medical school nor during our careers. I entered the National Medical Library in Kyiv and stared in disbelief on the empty shelves with no books. I asked the librarian to provide me some books or journals about radiation, and the answer was they received an order from the above to take all the books and journals from the shelves that contain a word radiation. In this clip, a nurse warns a pregnant woman not to visit her husband. Who are you? What are you doing here? I have a pass. You can't be here, it's not safe. I am here to see my husband. Vasily Ignatenko, he's a firefighter from Chernobyl. I know who Ignatenko is, but you can't. I have permission, I, I've... You can see him for 30 minutes, not a minute more. And you cannot touch him in any way, do you understand? Yeah. Room 15. You're not pregnant, are you? No. People with acute radiation sickness, they are not radioactive, they are not contagious to adults, to pregnant women, or to children. The firefighter did not wear his contaminated clothes and was showered. After these two, he would not be contagious or dangerous to anybody who is around him. Get out. Get out of here. Let me go. Let me go. Stop it. Stop it. You let her in that room, inside the plastic, touching him. This false beliefs had a very dangerous outcome. Many children were evacuated to Moscow, and many families in Moscow who were offered to these children, they rejected because uh, they claim that these children are contaminated or they call them dirty and they don't want them in their household. In this clip, Ludmila comforts her dying, severely burned husband. Okay. Oh, it's my time now. I see. has gone. I don't think that this is a realistic to have all this degree of burns and uh, coloring and intensity all over the body. I did not work as a burn 
clinic. However, my colleagues who did work in Moscow in hospital number six provided me with a pictures of radiation burns and uh, I never seen anything like portrayed in this. These look like someone really, you know, a painter or artist was doing this without any solid knowledge or experience. In this clip, Uliana explains what happened to Ludmila and her baby. Do you know the name Vasily Ignatenko? No. He was a fireman. He died two weeks after the accident. I've been looking in on his widow. She gave birth. A girl. The baby lived for four hours. They said the radiation would have killed the mother, but the baby absorbed it instead. We live in a country where children have to die to save their mothers. Someone has to start telling the truth. It's a medical fiction that fetus can absorb radiation. There is no science behind, it's not like my opinion, I would say there is no science behind saying very inaccurate thing that fetus would absorb the radiation and uh, die, but um, protect his mother. But you know, viewers who are watch, who were watching this uh, clip, they believed. My colleagues called me asking if this is true because it was so not convincing, but it was there. It was emotional and dramatic and that what people felt. It was ironic to me that next uh, statement that came from Uliana was we need to tell the truth. This is a postscript to the series. The number of 93,000 is largely inflated. It's difficult to make a direct comparison between a uh, race of cancer before and after Chernobyl. The diagnosis is much better. People are undergoing screening, which was not a case before. So in order to have correct numbers, statistically significant, the large uh, epidemiological studies needs to be done and properly assessed. Sometimes it's matter to get the medical facts correct. We cannot undo the past, but we can learn from the past. And if it's ever a nuclear accident, our response to people from contaminated areas should be based on science, not on fear.